finally, I'm on Real Southern Woman. Woo, what a week. Lord of mercy, I'm so tired right now, I can't hardly sit up. Um, we've had a very busy week. We were two weeks gone. So when we got home, we had all our chores to do. Um, May and Amy are on spring break, so they're home all week. Chris decided to go look at boats, so we spent Monday in Alabama. We went to, after coming home on Saturday, we turned around Monday, went to Opelika, then we went down to Mount Miggs exit, then we went up to Birmingham, then we got home about 10 o'clock Monday night. Tuesday, we got back on the road and went over on the other side of Athens to um, Elberton, if any of y'all know where that is. Excuse me, and there is a marina there that sells boats, and Chris found a boat that's a bay boat. Now, the last time he bought a boat was before he met me, which was a long time ago. He, well, I mean, we bought our bay boat that's $5,000. Now, we did do that, um, but we're gonna sell it. And so this is his second new boat he's had. He had a bass boat new back in. I think he bought his bass boat about 96 or 7. And now his brother-in-law has it. And anyway, that was Monday, Tuesday. Mama hasn't been doing well. Wednesday, I paid bills, paid Mama's bills, went to see Mama, spent the night with Mama. Yesterday, let's see. Yeah, I worked some too yesterday. Today... Me and Chris have been running around. I've been trying to uh, book a trip for my kids. Send your trip. I done that. And um, we did make a video for CBC finally. Um, I went on live just for a few minutes. That wasn't our real video. And then um, I tried to do some flowers with cake lessons. It takes forever to work with icing. It takes forever to do that. To do that so tomorrow I'm making a pound cake for sure I've got a pound of butter laid out for it and um, tonight I'm finally getting to talk to y'all I'm so tired though um, butter plenty of butter for tomorrow it's laid out anyway I made me a sweet tea because I just have stopped and guess what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take these blackberries because I'm too lazy to get out anything. And I'm going to smash them with my little meat um, separator that somebody sent me. I think it, I can't remember. Y'all forgive me for not remembering who sent me what. What I need to do is make a list and hang it on the wall in here so that I know who sent what. So if you're watching this and you've sent me something Tell me what it was so I could put you on the list so that I don't get it wrong. I don't want y'all to think I'm not thankful. It's just that I stay so busy I do good just to write it down. Look, blackberries. This is that thing somebody sent me. I don't know if it was Mary or not, but um, it smashes hamburger meat. But I'm going to smash my blackberries. You think they'll squirt on my new shirt? Maybe. I better put them over here. So I'm gonna smash, uh, they are splashing. I better get them away from me, y'all. And I'm gonna smash them and put them in my tea. Why? Just because I love berry tea. And I like for it to have real berries in it, not that fake stuff. And then we're gonna read our Bible lesson. How's that? As soon as I smash my blackberries. The only person that said anything is Velda. Hello, Velda, that I can see anyway. I can't reach the phone to swipe it, but that reminds me when my kids were little, they watched um, Dora the Explorer, and she would say, swiper, no swiping. I think that says Betty on there is watching with the Betty Boop. The Betty Boop. All right, look, y'all, this looks good. Yummy. Blackberries. <laughs> a lot of people, my husband thinks this is so nasty. He's like, how can you do that? 
He don't like blackberries. He don't like the seeds in blackberries. I love them. So he's like, that is so gross that you put those seeds down in that drink and you drink it. I'm like, oh, I just love it. Love it. Let me see who else is on here. It did splatter some, y'all. And I'm a little bit disappointed in my shirts. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to go get this one that has black on it. Now, these things cost a blasted fortune. They really do. I think I'm going to go turn off my store and try to find a different place to get them from. Because I washed this I washed this one, y'all, and it had the black on it. And to me, it made it fuzzy looking. Um, I don't know if y'all can tell or not. But it kind of just made it kind of fuzzy looking. Like it, like it bled a little bit. This side looks good but the front side looks like either it wasn't on there good to start with or it I don't know I'm just disappointed they should they should be really good as much as they cost they should be good quality they're Hanes t-shirts but I mean the um, application thing should be good I think so I may be changing it up from Teespring. And everybody loves Teespring and brags on Teespring and all that. And I send them a message and I still ain't heard from them. Yummy. Okay. Let's talk about the Lord. How about it? Instead of myself. All I've talked about is me. Woo, Lord knows I need to get my mind off myself and on to Him. Today. It's April. It's my niece's birthday, and I ain't even called and wished her a happy birthday. I've got to do that when we get off here. Destiny Rain, happy birthday. I don't think you're listening, but anyway, it's April the 4th. I'll never forget the day she was born. Good fruit. This talks about good fruit, y'all. Good fruit. I'm eating fruit tonight. You know what? It's amazing what God has made. For us to enjoy. But anyway, I sure do like my blackberries. And I'm glad he made them for me. It says, bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Matthew 3, 8. Now, the book of Matthew. This is out of the book of Matthew. And it's one of the Gospels. And I don't know if y'all know. I mean, a lot of y'all know it. But some of you don't. But Matthew was written for the Jewish uh, people. And not really for the church. So remember that when you're reading in the book of Matthew, that it's not doctrine for the church. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's just not. It's the gospel. Um, and it pertains to the Jewish nation. So some of that stuff in there, if it don't make sense to you, it, that might be why, because you're not applying it correctly. Um, and it don't really apply to you. Okay. I'm not saying that it can't kind of apply to you, but it don't specifically apply to you. How's that? Okay, it says, We all long to be happy people, comfortably situated in fulfilling lives. Ain't that the truth? And there are thousands of products that promise to help us achieve that. Like this little masher I'm using tonight. Right? I reckon so. Oh, I want to show y'all something while I'm thinking about that. And I know I'm reading the word. But look at this. I just I, I just pressed that on this because, you know, I, I mixed up my blackberry tea. You see that design it makes? It's pretty. You can use that and press it on top of a cookie and make a design. And my daughter actually used it on her biscuits that she made when she rolled her biscuits. And that's why hers looked different. I thought that was neat. Anyway, it was her idea. Um, but that's a product that we use. This is, uh, by the way, I'm going to start over. This is Charles Stanley's book, and it is called Jesus, Our Perfect Hope. And today's April the 4th, daily devotional out of it. And it says, we all long to be happy people, comfortably situated in fulfilling lives. And there are thousands of products that promise to help us achieve that. However, the emphasis on most self-help items is on what we are supposed to do on or think 
Although they make inspiring claims and even make us happy short term, they never produce the genuine, long-lasting peace and contentment we truly desire. This is because these are not feelings that you can generate on your own or through earthly means. They are solely the work of the Holy Spirit within you. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are all His fruit, manifestations of His renewing work in your life. This comes out of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, and Galatians is for the church. Now, when I read those, I, I'm guilty of not having each and every fruit of the Spirit as much as I should, as I'm sure you probably do as well. Uh, some of them make me feel guilty just reading out the word out loud. It says, from the moment you accepted Jesus as your Savior, the Holy Spirit has been working to transform you into Christ's likeness and free you from the bondage of sin. That is how you become the joyful, peaceful, loving person you desire to become. You yield to his activity. So don't fight him. Obey how he prompts you and enjoy the harvest he brings forth from your life. So love, we all try to have that one and think that we do. Like, um, I'll, I'll just go from my perspective. You know, I try to love everybody. Now, I really do. I might not like everything everybody does or like everybody, but I try to love everybody. And love is a commandment in the Word of God. It's not something that always comes naturally, okay? So remember that. You know, he does tell wives to love their husbands, and husbands love their wives, I think. So remember that. Um, it says joy. Joy is one of those words that really, in my opinion, only comes from the Holy Spirit and God. There's nothing like joy, and there's nothing, there's nothing that you can explain to tell somebody what joy means. It's just having joy and contentment in your heart, and it's just hard to describe. But those of us who know the Lord and do have Him in our heart have that joy in our life that we have experienced Maybe we don't experience it every day, but we know what it's like to experience joy, and it is a true blessing. Now, peace and patience. Peace and patience are two different things, of course. Peace, can we just have peace in our own home? That would help, wouldn't it? Um, this week has been chaos here. May had to go to court today because she got a ticket when she had a wreck. Well, she had to go to court and they're wanting to go somewhere on their, on their senior trip. And so she was like, aren't y'all going to go to court with me? And Chris said, and I said, Chris, are you going to go with her? Because I got to work today. And he goes, Tammy, you're wanting to send her on a senior trip. And you don't think it's a big deal. So I think she can make it to court. So she went to court by herself this morning. Yes, she did. She said when she got home, they gave her, let's see, she's on some type of, it's not like a true probation, but kind of like a probation. She has to take a course for teenage drivers. She ran a stop sign, if you want to know what she did. Well, um, she said, Mama, everybody there had a parent with them but me. Even a girl that was 21 years old and looked like she was about to cry had her mother there. And I said, well, do you think it hurts you not having your parents there? She said, no, I don't. And so she's got to see somebody in handcuffs. And anyway, she got, she got to experience court today. But Chris said, we are not going to go in there and sit and wait for them to call your name. So, I guess we're tough love parents, but you know, you got to let them grow up. They're about to be gone, and they got to take responsibility for their own actions. Anyway, she got to go to court today where there's justice, right? 
where our God is the true man of justice. So it's amazing that he has pardoned us to be his children through his son, Jesus Christ. Isn't it? It's amazing. So um, let's get back on our lesson. It says peace. Anyway, peace. It's been kind of chaotic around here. Um, patience. That one's very hard to have, especially if you want something real quick or you need something quick. And maybe God don't think you need it, but you do. And so that can be really hard sometimes. Kindness. That one's pretty easy as long as you're, or it is for me. I can be kind to people all day long when I don't know them. But it's, are you kind to everybody around you? Are you kind to those that are around you all the time? That's the big one. And goodness, Lord of mercy to me, there ain't nothing good about me unless it comes from Jesus Christ. I can just go ahead and tell you. If it wasn't for him, I'd be not worth flip. Because I'm pretty mean. I really am. Um, I ain't going to pretend to be holy when I'm really not. The only thing holy about me is Jesus Christ living in me. That's it. Um, and so, the goodness comes from him for sure. And according to the Bible, there's none good, no, not one. So, if you think you're good, you're wrong. You're lying to yourself. So, you need to read the scripture. And see that none of us are good. No, not one. And when we decide and finally figure out that we're really not, we realize we do need him more. Okay, faithfulness. That's a hard one too. We need to be faithful. We need to be faithful to, I think, to the Lord and to those around us. If we say we're going to do something, let's try to do it. You know, don't make every excuse in the world to get out of doing something. Gentleness. That speaks in itself. I mean, gentleness reminds me of how a grandmother should be. I'm sorry, but that's just how I feel. When I think of my grandmother, even my Spitfire grandmother was gentle. Even Granny Benefield seemed to have a gentle way about her. Um, I remember, this is goofy, but I remember Granny was gentle and sweet enough that if we happened to be down there at three o'clock when she popped the top of her glass Coca-Cola, Coca she hid them in her little pantry thing in the dining room. And she always drank it when, when Granddaddy was napping or at work. And it was about three o'clock every day and she got her a Coca-Cola. one, And she always bought them in the bottle and, um, and I know y'all think Coca-Cola is so bad for you, but she lived to be 90. And, um, but she was sweet and gentle enough that if we happened to be there, she might give us a little sip. Now, she didn't let us drink out of her bottle. She'd put it in a glass. But sometimes she'd treat us to a little sip. Um, and I know that's not real gentleness, but it was for me as a child to think that she would give up something and sacrifice something for me was a big deal. I thought it was really sweet. Self-control, Lord, that's a hard one. We can't do that at all without him, can we? They're all fruit and manifestations. So I think it's kind of cool that this lesson is about good fruit when I'm eating fruit tonight. Blackberries. So, it says, Jesus, bear good fruit in me. I yield to your wonderful transforming work. Amen. Um, and I hope that he does yield some fruit in us. And I hope that we think about how we're acting and whether or not his Holy Spirit is able to work in us as we go throughout our days this week. Um, I know I've been busy. I have been reading. I just haven't had, I'm sorry, but I really hadn't had time. And hadn't felt like it. I also had a migraine for a couple of days this week. Which hadn't been easy. So it's just been a wild, wild week. And um, I'll be glad when we get back on our normal routine. And our schedule that we had made for CBC. I will say, I sure do like our schedule. Because we do things on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And then we have the other days to do things that we need to be doing for our family. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the Bible study tonight. My dog's in there playing with their new toy. You hear it? Soda. Why don't you bring me that? Let me show it to them. 
I got them a new toy when we were in uh, PetSmart. I'm telling you, these dogs are so spoiled. I can hardly stand walking by them toys and not picking them up something. Isn't that ridiculous? $3.99. I'll go get it short to you because it's their favorite thing. It's always been their favorite thing. They'll fight over it. They love the balls, but I have to get the balls that are small enough that they can pick up and throw. If I don't, they get very frustrated because they can't pick them up. But they are these spiky, rubbery toys, and they squeak. And y'all know what I'm talking about. And you can get these sometimes at Dollar General. They'll have the balls that light up in the middle, uh, but I hadn't seen them in a while. But my dogs love these. She's over there right now just trying to get it. Soda, do you want your toy? You do? Can you speak? Can you speak? 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 She's not going to speak. Chris is bringing in his plants. It's been getting cold at night. You want to show them your plants or have you already made a... Uh, no. They'll fight over that thing. I should have bought more than one, y'all. Um, he has got, his plants are growing pretty good. Well, the squash is really growing, ain't it? Which, which one is this? Squash. Squash. Um, anyway, Chris, come here. I want you to look at this in front of them and see what you think. I think this thing uh, faded a little bit, and if it did, we're going to take this stuff off the store. As much as it costs. Look at it. It looks like it, don't it? Makes me mad. Anyway, I'll say our prayer, but I'm going to wait till he quits walking through here. He's been working out. That man, I get exhausted, and he works out. I don't know how he does it. Who's under my feet? All right, I thought about, since I hadn't been on here in a while, let me just... Um, look at, see, Matthew 3, 8, let's read a little bit, we'll, we'll read a little bit of Matthew 3, then I'll let y'all go for the night, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Matthew's the first book in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 3, Woo! I love John the Baptist, this is about John the Baptist. Matthew 3. It's one thing my brother says. I'm going to tell y'all. First, first we'll read a little bit. It says, In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Elijah. No, it's not Elijah, it's Esaias. Why does he say that? Prophet Esaias saying, I don't even know who Esaias is. Is that how you say that, Chris? I always ask my husband and he never hears me. Okay, let's do it again. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair. Y'all listen to what he wore, okay? This is John the Baptist, the man who paved the way, all right? Proclaimed the word. Who was coming? He said, it says, his raiment was of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey. And then went out to him Jerusalem and all of Judea and all of the region around about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, this is a man who is about the craziest looking guy ever. And Jesus trusted him to pave the way. So... 
a lot of people think that you gotta look a certain way, dress a certain way, be a certain way. Let me say this. If that was true, then why in the world would he have used John the Baptist the way he did? People just blow my mind. So anyway, just thought I'd throw that in there. So that's the one thing my brother told me one time when I said something about somebody having a dress code. He said, Tammy, have you ever thought about what John the Baptist wore? He said, well, think about it. And, and I thought, you know, he's right. Um, and he chose, you know, Jesus to be born in a poor family. And, I mean, he did things like that. And that's why the, Jew, the Jews were like, this can't be our king. This can't be our Jesus. But he did it because it, he doesn't have to have royalty to use. He doesn't have to have good people to use. He has to have people who are willing to be used. So just remember that. Um, hope y'all have a good night. I'm going to go in here and sit down with my husband. I hope he's not going to turn on the Braves game. And if he does, I'll just go to my room. This is the time of year that just drives me nuts with the Braves. I get so tired of watching ball games every night. Now, some of you women love the Braves. More power to you. I could care less about them. Matter of fact, it drives me crazy that they have to, t that, why do they have to have that many games? It's ridiculous. They can't even have a life with their family. Just so men can watch ball every night. Money, money, money. That's what it's all about. Well, anyway, I'll quit and get off my soapbox because I'm supposed to be showing my fruit. I hope y'all have a good evening, and I hope to see you tomorrow. And thanks for watching Real Southern Woman. Let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, and we thank you for John the Baptist, and we thank you for trusting us through uh, you dying on that cross and trusting us and sending that Holy Spirit so that it can be here on this earth and come and live inside of us so that we could be vessels to be used of you. Um, I just can't imagine how you have made a way the, the, the main and number one judge of all um, who is righteous and perfect after May went to court to date. It just reminds me of how you have made a way for us and it's just by your grace and our, that we would have faith in what you've done for us. And we thank you for that. Be with all of us tonight. And I hope we get good rest. I hope you're with my mother because she's not doing well. And I hope you're with all of those out there that are not doing well. And uh, just be with each and every one of us and help us to um, show these fruits of the Spirit as we walk about during the day in our homes and away from our home. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Bye, y'all. Love y'all. Now I'm going to go drink my tea. I guess y'all could hear me tonight. I'm using Chris's phone. I Did you take my phone, Chris? Anyway, I think you took my phone downstairs to use my earphones because I couldn't find it. Bye, y'all.